Minister Coughlin, P.J. Hanlon, Youth Development Officer, Urban Council members, Donegal County Council members, representatives of the FEA, representatives from the various leagues, sponsors, invited guests, and everyone here present today, you're all very welcome to the official opening of St. Mary Sports Park. A special thank you to Mary Coughlin, Minister for Social and Family Affairs, who gave her time to come here today and officially open this new ground. Today is a unique one as it brings together two of Donegal's top junior soccer teams to play a competitive league game at the opening of this new pitch. I welcome Ellie Selig and their supporters here today. This is a fine neighbourly gesture from the club who have had an outstanding season, won five trophies, both junior and senior, last year. The completion of this development is a combination of the efforts and support of a great many people to whom we are deeply in indebted. Our own local community, our main sponsors, FOSS Community Employment, Sports Capital Funding, Inishome Partnership, also our main contractor Seamus Fullerton and our fencing contractor Henry O'Donnell. The evidence of all your contributions is clearly visible for all to see here this afternoon. The voluntary effort that is put into this club by the committee, managers, trainers, coaches, club leaders, members and helpers is immense. Without this team effort, sport in our community would not be in the healthy environment state it is today. I'd like to put on record my appreciation to all the volunteers who give many hours of their time each week throughout the year to provide the opportunities 
for all our young people to participate in sports and recreational activities. In a society where drugs and alcohol are rife, it is more important now than ever to have the facilities to occupy the leisure time of our young people. It is good to see that this has now been recognised by the government and more funding has been made available to provide better facilities in the community. For this, we thank you, Minister. Thank you all very much. I now ask Jeremy O'Brien, Secretary of the Irish Home Football League, to say a word. Thank you, Charlie. Reverend Father, Canon Barton, Minister Coughlin, ladies and gentlemen, and especially all the supporters, the members, and the committee of Cockhill Celtic Football Club. On behalf of the National League, I would firstly like to thank the local club for their kind invitation to today's opening. As the National League Secretary, I would also like to extend my hearty congratulations to Cockhill Celtic, to the people of the area who have all contributed to the development of this fabulous playing facility, which will be availed of by the local schools, daily ladies, youths and senior teams. It is a testament to all the hard work that has been carried out over the years by a dedicated and focused group of people. They deserve great praise for all their work, their vision and enthusiasm, which has seen this club develop from the outset into one of the most progressive clubs, not only in Inishowen, but in County Donegal and beyond. The Inishowen Football League, for their part, are delighted to see the massive strides being undertaken by Cockhill Celtic, and we would indeed urge all of our clubs to aspire to the high standards which are already on view here. Developments such as these not only enhance the locality, but also greatly enhance the stature of the league given all the various competitions which include teams from other leagues and counties. Finally, to finish, I would once again, on behalf of the National Football League, like to congratulate all of Cockhill Celtic on their hard work and superb pitch and wish them all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dermot. Now we have Jim McCollum, FEA Board of Management and member of the FEA Senior Council. Reverend Fathers, Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, on behalf of the President of the Football Association of Ireland, Milo Cochran, and the Board of Management, I would like to congratulate Cock Hall on their latest venture. I'll say it's their latest venture, because I don't think this hard working committee's finished with development yet. Cock Hall started as a very small team. They started off as Westbrook Celtic with one team and they have evolved over the years into the club that it is today. Three junior clubs, underage at all levels with a vibrant ladies section. I think that earlier committees would be the first to admit that the challenges that are there for the committee today were not there in their day. Charlie touched on it there a minute ago. We have an underage, an increasing underage drink culture. Not to a big extent, but not to be underestimated, a drugs culture. And it has been proven statistically that the way to combat this or these things are by providing better facilities for the young people. We in the Football Association of Ireland recognise this and we will do our best to support clubs and these ventures. The Football Association of Ireland, five years ago, brought out a technical plan. One of the better things was to appoint Brian Kerr as technical director. I think his record stands for himself. He has, been, he has moved on now as Ireland team manager and has been succeeded by Paddy Boner. And I think Paddy Boner will continue his good work. The other venture that the FEA went on was the provision of technical director, technical development officers, and they hope to have a technical director in every area in this country.
Clubs like Talk Hall provide the facilities for the young people. But I would like to make a plea for a facility for our elite, elite athletes. The Bowden Roy Keynes, the Bowden Damien Duffs, I think they deserve a stadium to show off their great skills. We in the FAA a number of years ago aspired to build a stadium, Ericon Park. But when the government moved to build the stadium, we stepped aside. So I would like the government not to be detracted from that, that path and provide us with this stadium. I would like to commend Cock Hill as well on their decision to move, to move today's opening and not to clash with tomorrow's semi-final. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish Paul McGonagall a former member of the Cockhold Club and the rest of the Donegal squad, all the best tomorrow. I'd just finally like to thank personally the Cockhold Club for inviting me here. I make no apology, I'm a football person. This is my scene, Gormina Mega. Thank you, Jim. Now we have uh, Desi Kelly, FEA Junior Council member and secretary of the Ulster Football Association. Trevor Fowler, Canon Barton, Minister Coughlin, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure today to represent the FAI Junior Council, along with the Ulster Football Association and the Donegal League indeed, not forgetting them, because we're all in football together, to this official opening of St Mary's Complex by the Cockhill Celtic Football Club. It's very gratifying to see a complex of this stature in the Nation Peninsula. I know the people of Cockhill have dug deep over the years to provide this, along with their previous facilities, and they go from strength to strength when it comes to getting football pitches ready. This is immaculate, a credit to the club, and they must be congratulated for all their hard work over the years and the continued support they give to football in the NHL League and in Donegal as a whole. And it, the Cockhill Sally Football Club are very progressive when you see the many teams they put out week in, week out. Schoolboys at all age groups, youths, juniors, and not forgetting the Women's League. They're providing facilities for all. They're keeping all the young people off the street, and they must be admired for that. They have a hard-working committee led by their chairman, Charlie O'Donnell, and deserve the highest praise for the work they give to all levels of football in the county. Now, Jim McConnell touched on a national stadium, and he hopes, as he said, to see it someday. I have a different opinion, because I can't ever see a national stadium. I think a day might be the right time to say that, one of the minister present here, because they're pussyfooting about for years. And if I take a leaf out of Cock Hill's book and go and do the job, then we wouldn't be waiting for years and years to see something that's not going to happen and promises that it will happen. So I hope that the message goes back to the government loud and clear from today. Look at Cock Hill's Celtic Football Club. Look at the progress they're making. Why is the National Stadium behind them? Again, congratulations to Cock Hill and thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Desi. I should have said there, Desi was chairperson of the FEA Junior Council. Now we have John Corn, chairperson of the FEA Youth Council and chair, also chairperson of the Ulster Football Association. Mr. Chairman, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to come to any show again <coughs> for the open a pitch 
we had the opening of the pitch, we were just not the first one we have been down it. And it shows the progress that has been made in this place for the for young people. Uh, but you have to look back for you have to go back into the years where the tradition of soccer football has been in and shown for as long as I can remember. I remember going as a very young boy, well Dan McLaughlin and them to we carried on a way back in the forties for a, a, a junior cup final in, in, in Dublin. And since that, Karen has been contested national competitions and they have had as good a grounds as, as we have now and things. And it also gives me great pleasure when we go out now as a chairman of the youth to foreign parts and see young fellas from Donegal on the, on the Irish team and doing well. Because you only go back when out in uh, Nigeria we had then in the choir in the semi final of the World Under 20, Under 20 World Cup, and you had Gary Doherty there from on his own, and he's since come on to be a great uh, player with the Spurs and with his country. So it's the uh, people like Cock Hill and the people before them that came and provided grounds and coaching. There's a lot of work in the background that goes on that people don't even know about. Uh, it has to get in football now. As in, we also have nearly uh, an every day a corn to be there at the end of a phone since I invented this thing. I always know where you are. I don't carry one for I don't want the wife to know where I'm half the time. But <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that, but I always like coming to any show because I have a kind of a interest in it now because of a son married down here. And I suppose I'll be calling for the days of day. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's great to see this, and it's great to see such it, uh, interest that uh, Cock Hill has. This is the second time that I've been here at the opening of Pitch for Cock Hill, and it's, they went from strength to strength. So uh, I congratulate them, and they deserve all the, the, the grants and things they get for the very hard working people down here. So I hope it continues. So I'm not like Derry. I'm a true believer in the government. I think if we're there long enough, we'll get a stadium. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Now we have PG Hanlon, Youth Development Officer, Initial and Partnership Company. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Minister, uh, Reverend Gentlemen, Ladies and Gentlemen, Agusaguni Ushla Galeer. First of all, I want to thank uh, Cock Hill for inviting me out here today. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to give it a go at something anyhow. But I remember coming out here way back, what, three or four years ago, Charlie, when I heard you were developing this new pitch. And I said, where can they develop a pitch at the back of Cock Hill School? Because the only recollection I had of this place here was that snipe left it years ago. But anyhow, I remember coming out some time later and I seen a, a JCB, I don't know whether it was bobbing up or down or floating in water, but I recognised poor old Seamus Fullerton in the middle of it. And I says, you know, Rena Donahue is up to something out here. She's probably trying to get an underground bypass for Bunkran and tell nobody anything about it. But it was a desperate looking mess at that time. But what has happened here since that, and fairness to Seamus, and it's a pleasure to work with him on, I can tell you that much, this is a tremendous development here. It's absolutely fantastic. I was out here this morning having a preview of it, I was caught at that as well, but it has turned out unbelievably well. I would say to people that are using it, take your time away while, don't panic into it. It takes those pitches a while to mature. You cannot play on it. 365 days of the year, despite the fact that there's so much money spent on it, it is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the weather takes us toll, it takes time to mature, but it is a brilliant, brilliant football pitch. Uh, realistically, one has got to be involved in this sort of stuff to have any idea what goes into it. Because it's uh, it's more than a job, it's, it's, it's more than a vocation. You have to be sort of mad, really, to stay with it. And, you know, when I look around and I see boys like Charlie O'Donnell, 21 plus, Joan the Cove, uh, Mickey Gill, Charlie the Waver, and boys like that there, they're at it as long as I can remember, and that's going back a fair while. But I think, ladies and gentlemen, those people and others 
the love of them. Deserve a big round of applause from you people. As Youth Development Officer within a Sean Partnership, to me, this is what it's about. This is about engaging young people. This is about giving them a choice in sport. This is about giving them skills. This is about giving them development that will develop them personally for practically anything they will come across through the rest of their lives. And to you people, I congratulate you. Cockhill Youth Club, the torture, right? If they heard I had money one time, and they never give up on me since. There's a woman, and this is true, she comes in the front door, she comes in the back door. She leaves threatening notes from me. She sends emails to me, looking for money, or for anything she can get off me. Now really, don't this is going to have to come to an end. I know you need a bit more to finish off things here, but I have no uh, magic wand, but there's a tremendous amount of stuff going on here in Cockhill for the young people, especially over the last few years, since they did get a wee bit extra resources. And credit where credit is due must go to the people that's providing that to them. There are people about here today who are looking and say, you know, ah, well, you know, you could do this and you could do that. Yes. What I would say to you is, especially to the parents, because of what Jim McConnell and others have touched on, the needs today to provide good, healthy, meaningful alternative for young people besides the drink, drugs, and all the other stuff is, get involved, get in here, give a year or give two years or give even a two hours a week to the youth club and to the, the, the football club here. And it can make a tremendous difference to those who need it most because this is about young people and it's about your young people and I would say to you get involved give a bit and gain a lot I'll conclude by wishing you every success I hope you win many matches and many trophies out here I need to be careful because I do have to go to Lily's and I'll take two you know so <laughs> anyhow I'm really pleased for the development the way it has turned out for you people because you deserve it you've worked against the odds with nothing and achieved a hell of a lot the difference in the, in here today is the fencing, the surface, and that is because of the additional money being provided by the department. And I would say to Minister Cotlin, there's maintenance, there's a lot of maintenance to be done. CE schemes, JI and, and, and other such programs, they need to be supported and funded. So don't forget about them. They're the people who make the difference in keeping the standards up. Gonna be the bag of Ganeer. Thank you, PJ. Now we have uh, Peter McLaughlin, Mayor of Burncrana. Thank you, Charlie. Reverend Fowler, Reverend Barton, Minister, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to say appreciate this this invitation here today. Um, the late Hugh O'Donnell would probably say, "People of the egg, what the hell do you know about football?" I don't know that much about football. But I do know one thing, I do know that of the people here that started this Cockhill Footballist Club at the start, if they knew the amount of work that they would have to do, they probably would have thrown in the towel at this stage. But thankfully they haven't, and thankfully as a testament to what they have done, a testament to their work, that we have this fine facility, which is indeed a benefit not just to Cockhill, but to the community of Boncana. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Father McGuinness and uh, Reverend uh, Sam Barton will do the blessing of the pitch now. The Lord created the universe and filled it with delights for us, the people of God. We are called to join in the task of creation by building up his kingdom. This football pitch which we dedicate today will help us do that by restoring us in body and in mind, by drawing us together as community, and by instilling in our young people qualities of courage, qualities of cooperation and cordiality. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who fills with joy the years of our youth. Give our young people health and strength. And blessed are you, Lord our God, who delights in the company of humankind, shows how to relate with each other in true solidarity. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who endow the human body with beauty and skill, urges through the spirit to put our energy to the service of others. And blessed are you, Lord our God, who encourages us to use our talents, fill us with your grace and integrity, 
our integrity, our leisure, and our play. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who will dance with us on the day of the Lord, be with our youth in their sport and recreation. Let us pray. Living God, may this pitch which we dedicate today build up our humanity, our community, and the health among our young people. May the competitions, the games, the contests to be played here encourage emulation and achievement and not recrimination and bitterness. May the various events that will be scheduled here bring us together rather than keep us apart. May we strive for the prize that lasts. May our leisure and recreation play its part in building up your kingdom of love and of joy. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Now, we'll ask uh, Councillor Dina Donny, Vice Chairman, Person of the Donegal County Council, to say a few words. Reverend Father Eddie McGuinness, Canon Sam Barton, Mary Coughlin, Minister of Social and Family Affairs, Councillor Peter McLaughlin, Mayor of Bunkrana Town Council, Charlie O'Donnell, Chairperson of Cockhill Celtic, members of the various football organisations, friends. As Chairperson of Cockhill Youth Club, I would like to welcome you all here on such a beautiful afternoon for this official opening of St Mary's Pitch here in Cockhill. I would like to pay a special tribute to the Chairperson Charlie O'Donnell and his very willing committee. It shows endless endeavours over many years expanding the role of the fast-growing Cockhill community. Every community in the country is tortured by the evil of drugs and unsocial behaviour. And to fit the youth into positive, constructive activities such as sport is the best antidote to such trends developing and taking root. I would like to associate myself with the many people who helped to make this day the success that it is. As someone living here, it gives me a particular pride to be able to say this. I would like to wish the two teams every success here today in the first match of the, of the opening league. Mullanaga agus Chukushi, Goromila Maihagov Golair. Thank you, Rina. Now we'll ask uh, Jim Sheridan, Donegal County Councillor, to say a word. Uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Fathers, Chairman, Minister, uh, Special Guests, Peter McLaughlin, Mayor of Bumkrana, and Councillor Donaghy, uh, and to all who have come on this great occasion to the opening of St Mary's Park here in Cockhill. Uh, can I say from the inset that I see that it, it is Cockhill Youth and Football Club. Of course the two amalgamated away back many, many years ago. But Rina, as President Chairman, uh, outlined the importance of youth work and the commitment that many people have given to the youth of Cockhill and the surrounding area. I would just like you to, to bear in mind the people from the beginning of the youth club and the formation of Westbrook Celtic going on to Cockhill Celtic in years gone by and the efforts that many of them have made and probably have left the area or have gone from us but their effort lives on and this is a testament today of the great facilities here that Cockhill Celtic have provided uh, to the youth club uh, I hope it continues in strength in Cockhill it's a, a great opportunity for young people to come together and socialize uh, but just bear in mind those uh, people of the area who have over the years too committed and have moved on elsewhere. Uh, again, uh, best wishes to all uh, and especially to the community of give great support. Uh, and I hope that support continues because from the end of the day, it's what a community puts into itself, it will yield fruit. 
and uh, that is very much needed to support our youth in the present in the present day that we live in. So to all, go with me to my hug of. Thank you, Jim. And now I'll give you Minister Marie Cotton, TD, Minister for Social and Family Affairs, who will now address you. And you just want once again to thank her once again today for giving of her time to come here today to open this pitch. Marie Cotton. Good morning, Kahirli, Corla de Kondai, Yana Specialta, Ver, and Corla Valle. Er du spoje vojna morega u lurama venša hara širiš vi menša hana nijer malehen da sira kaif mere ach eg hold hejan fut hejan kaif mere agus to lurama vehera širiš delighted to be here and delighted to participate in the celebration of what has been a tremendous achievement for the club and in particular to officially open St Mary's Sports Park here in Cockhill. I would first of all like to apologise on behalf of my colleague Cecilia Keevney who is unfortunately unable to be here uh, this afternoon to be part of your celebrations. Could I say that I um, oftentimes are invited to official openings and usually there's a punch in it but I don't really know what message to take home with me this afternoon because one side of the FAI are saying one thing and the other side of the FAI are saying another. So I think we'll leave that to another day and perhaps another occasion. Today we're here to celebrate an official opening and to celebrate a tremendous achievement. And I'd like to congratulate, uh, through Charlie and Rene, uh, the club and the youth wing in particular for what has been achieved. I appreciate very much that being part of an organisation uh, like uh, the FBI and the soccer clubs is quite difficult at a time when perhaps it's easier to sit and watch TV and play a few games and not in fact get out and be part of the voluntary aspect which is in fact the ethos and the backbone of many of the clubs that we have here in particular in the Northwest. But to thank you most sincerely for your support and for your foresight. Today is a culmination, perhaps, of a dream that you had maybe 15, 20 years ago. I know that you've grown from strength to strength as a club, and not being from this constituency, I don't have to take sides on who's going to win this afternoon. I suppose that's my prerogative on this occasion, but I wish both teams every success. Could I also say that it is important to acknowledge as well the local contribution and the local support, I'm sure there was a lot of uh, evenings when perhaps Charlie wasn't as welcome at the door as he would have been heretofore when it comes to uh, getting support. To thank the local business people who quite obviously are here in supporting the club. And also to say that the government have been on two occasions in a position to give financial support through the National Lottery. Once through your own co uh, your, my own colleague and, and the former minister, Dr McDaid, and on this occasion, uh, uh, John O'Donoghue. So a combination of working together uh, as a voluntary group, uh, working within the paid officials, working with people like the partnership groups, uh, the county councils uh, and the clubs themselves. A culmination of this has seen what is today a very fine pitch and I wish you every success for the future. As the boys here will say, you never know when some of the men and women who are coming here will be able to put on their national colours and for many perhaps they may have aspirations to go to the larger football clubs and to succeed uh, and represent uh, their hometown. I wish them every success. I hope everyone will enjoy the occasion and enjoy the day and to thank you again most sincerely for the honour of coming back to Buncrana uh, to officially open uh, St Mary's Park. Thank you, Minister. And now it comes to the official opening, and we'll ask the Minister now to cut the tape and officially open St Mary's Park. All right, folks, just a little bit towards the end here. Okay. Okay, we're going to be ready. Come up, me back. He's ready. Three, two. What's after two? One. Hey! <laughs>